Hey guys, welcome back to the Airplane channel. So, if you have been looking for a piece of Mac software, or at least Apple compatible software, that is good for planetary image stacking, guess what? There is actually a piece of software out there. It's free, and it's actually pretty good. Now, this piece of software, it's called Link EOS, and I believe it's developed by somebody in France because of the website it shows, you know, a French option for language and everything. And I haven't seen like a, lo a lot of development over a couple of years that I was using it. But recently the guy came out and he did a couple updates and he fixed a few of the bugs that were in it that, you know, made it actually very easy to use now. And also, here's the coolest thing of all, is that if you have a newer Apple with the M chips in them, this software is now optimized for it, which is one of the one of the things that I cannot say about just about any other piece of planetary stacking software out there. They've all been written for older, ancient hardware from 20 years ago and are not really optimized for the multi-core processors that we have today. Linkios is, okay, which makes it very fast, okay? And it's also very easy to use. So, without further ado, let's dive into it. Linkios is nice in that you basically start on the left hand side and you work to the right. Okay, so if you're used to writing that way, this is, you know, very easy. Up here at the top, there is a list of like different icons. And the first thing we'll do is we will click on list. And list is where we go look for images. So I've got some FITS files here. Uh, I'm not going to drag in all of them. Let's, let's just do like 50 of them just so that we can do this quickly and it will basically import those images. Now, the first thing we need to do is select one of them, okay? Doesn't matter which one. And then over here on the other side, we're gonna see we've got our image of the sun here, and we're going to basically draw a selection box. Actually, we need to go to the align section first. Actually, analyze, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do analyze first. Uh, and, and there, so there, I've made my box selection. Eh, let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, it always seems to use a square, but oh well. And what this is going to do is it's going to align all of our images based on these spots that are on the sun. So I'm going to go ahead and analyze, and it will go through and it will analyze them based on the quality of that particular section. And, and then we'll go back and I'll do a line. You can do this the other way around too. You can do alignment first. I, I like to do analyze first because analyze, what it allows me to do is basically remove images that are not of very good quality. And therefore, when I go to align the images, I don't have to align as many, okay? But you can do it either way. So there, I've selected 24 images, and then we're gonna go back here to the align section. And now only those images that are selected will get aligned, of course. And once again, we need to draw a box over that part of the image that we want to analyze because you know we don't want to line based on the entire image that would just take too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and this part will take a little bit longer. It actually does it kind of randomly. It doesn't go through the order of the images in the order in which they're in the software or your folder and everything, but you know, it does it pretty quickly. You know, I know it actually does it a lot faster than the older version did before this guy did an update. And I know this guy did an update, I think it was like at the end of last year, so 2023, something like that. And I know I was so happy with the update, in fact, that I actually went and even donated something to his cause. And I, by the way, if you find this software useful, you know, it's the only piece of Mac software out there that's dedicated to planetary imaging. So, you know, if you do use it, you know, you find it helpful, you know, maybe consider doing something to encourage him to, you know, maybe do some feature additions. So there we go. We are all aligned. And now I can go here to the stack section. And I'm not gonna double size. You could click on this double size right here. It will double the size of the image basically using drizzling. But uh, let's kind of, let's get try to get the entire image in here because we want to, draw this red box over everything that we want in the picture, okay? Which in this case is just about everything. All right, so now we're gonna hit stack. And Linkios will go ahead and stack the images. And it doesn't take very long. There it is, there, there's our stacked image, okay? 
And next we will do deconvolution. And deconvolution is a really screwed up way of saying sharpening. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we can play over here with our radius and the amount a little bit and it will basically do deconvolution or, or sharpening to our image and then of course there's the sharp unsharp mask which is your next feature that you can kind of play with a little bit and I'll just kind of move some of the sliders around a little bit uh, typically I would mess around with this to kind of try to see if I can get the best optimal image that I possibly could let me zoom out a little bit too uh, then there's the Lucy Rick Richardson, which is another type of sharpening system. And then of course, wavelets is another item we have. Now wavelets, uh, there's different ways to kind of tackle this. Like some guys will make the curve slope this way. Other guys will make the curve slope the other way. You know, and you can see here, okay, this, this is the one bug that I've found in the software. Sometimes it makes these purple lines that go across the screen. Uh, there's actually an easy way to fix that. And that's that we go backwards a step. And maybe we could even hit like restack again. And then we go forwards again and it'll get rid of these lines. But your eventual image won't have this, this, this screwed up mess on it. And then of course we have chroma align. Now chroma align is if you were using like a mono camera and stacking different types of uh, you know red, green, blue. And then of course we have levels, which you can mess around with a little bit. And the very last step of all, the process stack, this is basically going to be every single thing that you've done to your image so far summarized. And you can go back and kind of do some more tweaking to it and so forth to kind of like see if you can maybe tease a little bit more detail out of the image and so forth. And then once that's done, uh, we can go ahead and say, save the image okay and that's really all there is to it i mean it's such a simple piece of software let me go back here and uh this is our image stack analyze align and you see here i yeah i basically clicked back to align and then click forward into chroma align and it got rid of those horizontal lines which which is the only bug that i've seen so far it's kind of a little bit of a nuisance but you know it's free software <laughs> okay so there i hope you enjoyed this and you know hey there is a piece of software out there you can do planetary stacking uh using a mac